Today, we're breaking down what's really going on with this messy Selena Gomez scandal, talking how big or small it is that Trump just lost an abuse and defamation case, really concerning news coming out of Pakistan. We're talking all of that and so much more on today's brand new Philip DeFranco show, so buckle up, hit that like button, let's just jump into it, you beautiful bastards. Starting with, please brace yourself for, without a doubt, the weirdest phone call to be leaked in 2023 so far. Hey, brother, how you doing? Hey, Alex, it's Tucker. Do you have a minute to talk? Absolutely. I was thinking we could do a show together where we're topless and we suck each other's nipples and sort of play with them a bit. It would be a comment on gender That's a really roles, great idea. sort of a funny parody thing. So Alex Jones there is real. That's actually him. But Tucker's voice is not. Instead, that was an AI voice clone created by Canadian prankster Chris James, also known by the streamer named Prank Stallone. He apparently somehow got the phone numbers for both Jones and Carlson, faked being Carlson to call Jones, with Alex initially buying into it, but eventually realizing the trick and then hanging up, which is where it might have ended had not Jones then devoted a whole 30 minutes of his show to talk about the incident and even threaten James with litigation. Hey, let me tell the little prankster, uh, uh, pranks to loan something. Tucker Carlson's lawyers are involved in what you did, we believe is a crime. So I think even though you think you're safe up in Canada, you're going to get arrested for what you did yesterday. So keep laughing, you little arrogant person. And after that, he goes on to rant about the dangers of misinformation, which were just, which it's, he's the best guy for that. All right, been ordered to pay over a billion dollars to the families of Sandy Hook victims. But that said, while he is someone who peddles it for a living, yeah, the dangers of AI misinformation and deepfakes is a real thing. We've talked about this on the show for a while, which if anything, the, the bad news is that this is like the, the least horrible use of AI voice cloning or, or deepfakes or misinformation that we've seen recently. And it's really only going to get worse. And then Americans are on edge right now. One of the ways we're seeing that play out are all these innocent folks just getting shot up for the dumbest reasons by paranoid maniacs. It feels like the things that used to shock us have now made us numb and have become normal. And we've now got yet another story in this category, this time with a guy who shot a little girl in the back of the head for playing hide and seek on his property. Our reportedly 58 year old David Doyle says he took out his gun when he saw quote, shadows outside his home in a rural Louisiana town. So he went out there, saw people running away from his house and he just let the bullets fly with him hitting the 14 year old though. Luckily her injuries were reportedly non-life threatening. But of course he's now been arrested and charged with several counts of aggravated this and that. But the American crazy train also doesn't end with him because we're also hearing about 22 year old Seth Point who's waiting at a stoplight in his blue Mustang when he just fucking snaps. He rear ends the SUV in front of him then lurching back and slamming into the pickup truck behind him. And as the woman in the SUV gets out he apparently tries to drive away but crashes into a box truck in another lane instead. But it's not over yet because he backs up going over the median and smashing into a Porsche driving in the opposite direction. With him then coming full circle with all the grace and elegance once again plowing into the first SUV forcing it forward several feet. And so now Seth has been charged with felony assault with a deadly weapon. And this guy just seemingly filled with so much much rage and it also doesn't feel like he's alone. Even if it's anecdotal, it just seems like there's an extra amount of people out there right now responding to the tiniest defense with the nuclear option. And with all this chaos happening, I feel like I have a, a new best trait. Like I used to feel bad that I was this non-confrontational introvert, but apparently that's a fucking superpower in America these days. Where I grew up seeing any interaction with another human being is like w exhausting work. Turns out my subconscious self-defense system S tier. So yeah, I guess the moral of this story is be careful out there, America, but also don't be careful in the overly aggressive aggressive, crazy way that we've seen other people be careful. And then, are you a stan? Or are you just a lame ass bully? That's the question at the center of this news around Selena Gomez fans. Cause apparently they're no longer focused on bullying Haley Bieber and instead are focusing on Francia Raisa. Right, and Francia, if you don't know, she's an actress. She's on How I Met Your Father. But a lot of people, especially Selena's fans, know her as the friend who donated her kidney to Selena amid her lupus diagnosis in 2017. Right, an absolutely monumental thing to do for anyone. And Francia at the time called it a life-changing experience. But in the years since that happened, there have been headlines and rumors about drama between the two. People wondering if they're throwing shade at one another, if they're even friends anymore. More? Do they hate each other? Right? Stuff like that. And so recently TMZ was like, let's get the answer and or just instigate something. And so they saw and or track down Francia on the street and they started asking her questions about this. But she was plainly refusing to answer questions about Selena. How's everything going with uh, you and Selena? I know you have followed her. You still don't follow her. Are, are things good with you, with you guys? Sunday so fun. <laughs> Do you guys talk at all? Would you are, you? are you willing to follow her back? Will you follow her back eventually? What kind of tree do you think this is? This is hiding on probably avocado? No. Are right, she's just dodging questions left and right, and Selena's fans seemingly didn't respond well to this. And if you head to her Instagram, it's not hard to find people saying negative, nasty, horrible things to her. Which brings us to yesterday with TMZ posting a clip of her talking to that same paparazzo, with her telling him that their previous conversation caused a big mess for her. I didn't mean to do all that, but you know, <gasps> it, it happened. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure no one means to do anything, but you know, now okay. I'm being bullied. Like What's right new? Now. He then asked what kind of comments she's been receiving, to which she said, I think the one that uh, probably hurt the most was yeah. I hope someone um, goes up your and really 
Uh-huh. With her adding that given everything, she doesn't feel like talking to TMZ, but the only thing she wanted to add was that bullying is never okay. In no way, shape, or form does anyone condone bullying. Yeah. Um, especially Selena. Yeah. She literally has a whole nonprofit dedicated to mental health. Okay. She's literally out there saying, please stop. Uh huh. So I don't understand why it's not happening, not just for me, yeah. but for others that are also yeah. being antagonized on Right, and that last bit likely referencing the Haley Bieber drama from earlier this year with tons of people attacking Haley in the defense of Selena. But it got so out of hand that Haley got death threats and Selena had to tell her fans to knock it off. Which yes, this is a story about Selena Gomez's fans, but it's also a conversation about stan culture in general. Because there's really been no shortage of examples of how quickly people move to bully and harass others online and how people are using fandoms as a weapon. Or you've seen Taylor Swift stands going after the men they think her songs are about in the same vein. You had Olivia Rodrigo fans going after her ex, Harry Styles fans going after Olivia Wilde. And often these things just take on a life of their own. Or even when you have people like Selena saying, stop it. You end up seeing examples of Stans breaking down the way she said it. And you know, did she actually mean it? Was she actually calling it for this? Or was it actually another jab? And understand, I'm not saying that if you're a fan of any of the people mentioned, or you know, there's so many people we didn't even mention in this story. I'm not saying like, you're a bad person. I understand why so many people don't speak out against this because it's horrifying to see a massive mob go after you. That's why with this whole situation, I gotta pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts on this? Right, and I ask this whether you're part of or outside of general Stan culture. And then, okay, picture this. You, you're on a business trip. It's late. You're tired. You peel off your socks. You flop into bed at a cozy Hilton hotel. You fall into a deep sleep and then you have a weird dream. All of a sudden you feel wet. There, There's like wet sounds. Your feet kind of tickle. And when you wake up, you realize, oh, I'm not in a dream. I'm in a nightmare. Because you find a man at the end of your bed actually licking your toes. What do you do in this situation? Well, for Air Force veteran Peter Brennan, who this was not a hypothetical question for, his answer was to scream. With us all going down at 5 a.m. at the Hilton Downtown Hotel in Nashville. And this wasn't some random passerby that found his way into the room. He sees a man in a uniform with a name tag. And so he yells, who are you? Why are you in my room? What are you doing here? It's like the man actually did talk to him, but he didn't give any substantive answers. The intruder then fleeing, with Brennan going to hotel security but saying that they didn't take him seriously. So instead, he calls the cops, and after investigating, they find that the suspect was actually David Neal, the hotel's night manager. With Brennan believing that this creep made a clone of his key card to get into his room, and so now he's suing him and the hotel. So one, I'm sorry if I just unlocked a new fear, or possibly kink for some of you. Which remember, it's only a kink if it's consensual, otherwise a crime. And two, apparently use every latch, thing, whatever you can put on a door, and then maybe even barricade it. Because apparently at some point in the last decade, all the weirdos were like, now's my time. I'm gonna go for it. And then, I wanna thank Seed for sponsoring this video during Digestive Health Month. Did you know that your inputs such as food and probiotics have direct correlation to your outputs? That's why it's so important to eat foods that nourish your gut microbiome while also taking a scientifically validated symbiotic. And after a year of taking Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic, I can tell you it's the real deal. Probiotics are a science. It's important that they're developed, manufactured, and vetted with scientific rigor and precision. And thanks to their Via Cap delivery technology, a unique capsule and capsule design, Seed's DSO-1 requires no refrigeration and the probiotic strains actually make it to your colon with 100% survivability. Seeds DSO-1 also provides benefits beyond the gut, like healthy regularity, eased bloating, heart health, skin health, and more. And during Digestive Health Month, Seeds offering a whopping 40% off your first month. You'll receive this 30-day supply, refillable glass jar, and travel vibe. And after that, they send sustainably packaged refills. So make the change this spring. Go to seed.com slash DeFranco and use code DeFranco at checkout to get 40% off your first order of Seeds DSO-1 daily symbiotic and free shipping. And then Trump was just found liable in a civil rape trial, with a jury awarding E. Jean Carroll with $5 million in damages. Now notably, this verdict, which came after just three hours of deliberation, is civil, not criminal. Meaning that even though the accusation at hand is about a rape, Donald Trump here has not been convicted and doesn't face any jail time for this. And as the New York Times explained, Carroll alleged that Donald Trump sexually assaulted her in the dressing room of a luxury department store, with Carroll suing Trump for battery and defamation, with the defamation claim stemming from a 2022 post on Truth Social in which Trump called Miss Carroll's case a complete con job and a hoax and a lie. And with his story breaking just before I uploaded today, obviously we're going to have to keep our eyes on this, both for this specific situation, but also to see what else comes from this, because of course, at least 26 women have accused Donald Trump of sexual misconduct or assault, especially as even part of this Carol suit's only been made possible recently. Right, as Axios noted, Carol was only allowed to sue Trump for battery as of last November, because that's when New York's Adult Survivors Act went into effect, which allows adult survivors of sexual violence to sue over attacks that occurred decades ago. And then, a new battle over food delivery is currently underway. Right, in places like New York City, tens of thousands of food orders are made every day, despite the fact that officials are actively working against the delivery workers. Right, the city 
Philadelphia, New York reportedly placed more than 30 million delivery orders in the last three months of 2021 alone. And the Upper West Side specifically placed 1.2 million orders in that time, which comes to around 14,000 orders per day. But despite, or maybe even because these millions of orders, members of the Upper West Side Neighborhood Civic Panel Community Board 7, they've been actively working against delivery workers. I mean, they're messing with every opportunity created to help them, including vehemently opposing a non-binding resolution which would encourage restaurants to allow delivery drivers to access their restrooms, with a resolution suggesting that if the restaurant refused, it should be noted when the business asked for the support of the community board in applying for a street cafe or liquor license. But that's just one example. Community Board 7 also voted against the transformation of a vacant newsstand into a rest and charging station for delivery workers, as well as delaying a plan for protected crosstown bike lanes. And as these numbers surfaced, we saw more conversation coming out about the struggles of being a delivery worker in the city, with the executive director of Workers' Justice Project saying, these numbers confirm what we already know. Delivery workers brave rain, snow, and sleet to fulfill millions of deliveries and keep New Yorkers fed, which is also why you have activists advocating not only for places to rest and recharge and protected biking infrastructure, but also for fair compensation. Which, when you look at the numbers, it makes sense. According to the Department of Consumer and Worker Protection, delivery workers' base pay was just over $7 an hour in the last quarter of 2021. And with that, a number of solutions have been offered. I mean, one of the big swings. There's a proposed rule for a $23.82 minimum wage for food delivery workers introduced last November. But recently, back in March, that got revised, dropping the number to $19.96 an hour by 2025. Which, hey, I'll say, I have no idea what the, the proper pay rate should be for this job. But this whole situation, I think, does highlight an issue we see kind of pop up over and over in different places. People or groups of people who use a service making life harder for the people that actually provide that service. And then, hell may have frozen over because some Texas lawmakers are at least considering some changes to their gun laws, and it's not like every baby gets a free AR-15 style weapon. Instead, in the House, two Republicans on the 13-member House Select Committee have broken with their party and voted with their Democratic colleagues to push a bill that would raise the age of buying AR-15 style weapons from 18 to 21. And this was a really unexpected surprise for Democrats in the Republican-dominated House as the committee wasn't even scheduled to meet yesterday. Though, to be clear, this does not mean it'll be smooth sailing from here. The bill still has to actually pass the House before its legislative session ends this Thursday, although the Dems think they have some procedures to extend that to the 29th. But even after that, it would have to then get to the Senate and then survive any vetoes from Abbott. And even then, while it is some sort of gun reform, it's not what many gun control activists really want. Right? It doesn't change the type of firearms that are available, their calibers, the size of their magazines, or a plethora of other features they've sought to ban. But considering this is Texas we're talking about, and literally any type of potential restriction on a firearm, still unexpected. And then, I've got an absolutely insane update today to one of the weirdest stories we've covered. You know, about two weeks ago, I talked about that crazy Kenyan death cult that encouraged its followers to starve to death. Although, on that note, autopsies are revealing that they didn't just let followers starve, instead some were just strangled to death. And it also increasingly is looking like killing them wasn't just for some twisted religious reason. With those same autopsies also showing that many victims are missing organs, leading police to believe that the cult was actually engaged in forced organ harvesting. And to take it all together, police claim that this cult was a highly organized crime syndicate and that there were likely more great out there which could bring the death toll to well above 133. And then, is this a political witch hunt or just consequences for actions? So we're talking about Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan being arrested today and all across the country his supporters have brought things to a standstill, with Khan's arrest coming as part of an investigation into the role he and his wife allegedly played in the Al Qadir University Trust. Which the quick version is that Khan and his wife allegedly made a quid pro quo deal with a real estate tycoon for land in order to build an educational institute for the trust, and in the end that supposedly cost the country $239 million. So Khan has denied any wrong wrongdoing, and everything about this case has been very controversial. For starters, his supporters claim that these charges are just politically motivated, as Khan was only ousted from power last year in a parliamentary no-confidence vote that he claimed was a plot by opposition parties, the military, and even the U.S., although he later withdrew his accusations against America. And on top of that, there's a question about the legality of the arrest itself. Right? Under recent rules changes, those accused by the country's anti-corruption authorities can only be arrested if they've ignored multiple warnings from the agency and intentionally avoid getting arrested. Now, government officials, they claim that Khan had been given multiple notices and that an arrest warrant was issued on May 1st, and saying because he allegedly refused to cooperate, they had to send the police to forcibly arrest him. However, Khan's supporters and his party are adamant that there were no warnings ever sent and that an arrest warrant was never actually issued, which of course would make this arrest illegal, some even claiming that this man was just kidnapped. So it's not surprising to see that throughout every major city there, his supporters have poured onto the streets. And while things have been relatively peaceful in most cities and others, protesters have ransacked military officials' houses, and there are increasing reports of police and protesters are clashing. But also, the much bigger general reality is that the entire situation is incredibly tense and things could easily escalate. Especially when you consider that this is just the start of the problems for Khan, right? Since losing power last year, the Al-Qadir case is just one of over 100 cases being brought against Khan, with him also being accused of pretty much everything, corruption charges, terrorism, even blasphemy. But for now, we're gonna have to wait to see what happens here, both for Khan, but also for Pakistan itself, right? We're talking about a situation that could destabilize for a number of reasons. And that's actually where today's show ends. But friendly reminder, you're getting two for the price of one, which is also free, because in addition to your daily Philip DeFranco show, I've been giving you 
you morning news videos. So just click or tap to get to that, or I'll include a link in the description down below. But as always, I gotta say, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces, and I'll see you tomorrow.